Hi guys, how's it going? Ivano here and today we're going to be talking about what you need to do after you've farmed your 332 gear that I talked about in my last video. So if you haven't seen that, check that out first. But once you have your basic gear set done, what do you want to do in terms of equipment in order to level the playing field and make sure you have the best chances of winning your first PvP matches? So in order of priority, the most important things that you should do right away, and I already talked about this a little bit in the last video, is you want to get your legendary implants. Now you can have two of those and they're going to be specific for your class. You can check out some of the class guides that I already have on my channel. More are coming in the next days and weeks. But basically get those, uh, level them up with tech frags and credits. Um, those are really important and depending on the class they can give you a huge buff to your damage, healing or tankiness. I also do have another video that explains how you can get a discount on your legendary implants once you level the first ones, so that makes it a little bit cheaper to gear your alts. And I'm going to link that as well in the description below, so if you want to check that out, go ahead. And then once you've gotten your legendary implants, you want to go over here and shop for your tactical item. Again, the best tactical item will depend on your discipline, so it also is subject to you knowing a little bit how your class already works, but I'm sure you can find many, many class guides out there that will tell you which tacticals are the best. How to buy this? Well, you simply need 3000 tech fragments and 1 million credits, so that's something that you will need to farm. The best way to farm tech fragments is still PvE, so you could be running, for example, a Dread Fortress in story mode, which is quite easy to do, even with 332 gear. Should not take longer than 10 minutes, and each of the bosses will give you around 500 tech frags. So you run, you know, one or two of them, depending on how much you have already saved, and then you can afford your tactical, so it shouldn't take very long. Next up would be augments. Now, again, I talked about this a little bit in my last video, but augments are incredibly important. Uh, if you right click with control, you can add mods to your item here. And then below here, you will see an extra slot, which comes from the augment kit MK11. Adding this slot to your item will give you the possibility to add in an augment. And these augments are quite powerful. So the best augments in the game will give you 130 mastery, and then 171 endurance and power. You can add an augment to each of your main slots except for the tactical, meaning that in total you can have 14 augments for a total of 2400 endurance roughly and 2400 power and then about uh, 1800 crit or something like this. Uh, there are different augments that will boost different stats of course. Um, where can you get them from? Well, you can craft them if you have a guild member that's into crafting and you will procure them the mats, then they might do that for you. Or you simply go to the Galactic Trade Network and you look for something like the Superior Critical Augment. And there's different ones. Make sure you don't accidentally buy these low level ones. Um, if you sort by price, then typically you'll find those. Uh, and those would be, for example, the, the best augments in the game that you can buy. Now, they are quite pricey, but there are also cheaper augments that you can buy, like these purple ones, 74, which are almost as good. And those go for, for roughly 68 million. So let's say I'm a DPS player, I want to get into the game, I will look for augments that have critical rating, since that's in general the most useful tertiary stat that you want. Those are too expensive for me, so I want an augment that costs no more than, let's say, 100 million. Those are actually level 73, but you can see the stats which they give you 126 power and endurance, 95 critical rating. If you multiply this by 14, it's still a crazy boost to your stats. And, you know, those augments will only be um, around 10 million, sometimes even less, depending on which day you're looking. So, you know, if you can afford that, at least get those augments, because overall this will give you, you know, a boost of something around 30,000 hit points in PvP and more damage, of course, as well. Don't forget to buy the augment kits because you will need those to add the augments to your existing gear. You can sort by price. Make sure you buy the augmentation kit MK11. There's also kits called MK10 and lower. You do not want those, so only buy the MK11s. You can of course also craft those if you're into crafting. Otherwise, just buy them off the GTN. Next up, when it comes to gear, I often get the question which relics are the best. And in 99.9% .9 of the cases, I would recommend that you run these two augments. The Thursian Relic of Serendipitous Assault and the Thursian Relic of Focused Retribution. They have a chance uh, every 20 seconds to give you 3752 power or mastery respectively. 
for six seconds. And during that time, you will do your biggest critical hits. So it's important to watch out for those buffs. There are clickable relics, uh, also called unused relics, but those are typically worse because the amount of stats you will get is less than the average stats you will get from those proc relics that we just talked about. And of course, with the clickable relics, you need to remember to always use them on cooldown to make them really worth it. So it's not really recommended, especially if you're first getting into the game and you want to learn the mechanics of it. So in a nutshell, just buy the power and mastery proc relic and be done with it. Where to get them? You can get them from the PvP vendor, of course, level them up through the PvP upgrade vendor on the fleet, or by using the weekly upgrade caches that you will get from doing your PvP weekly. Next thing that is absolutely important if you want to get into PvP, you gotta make sure you have the Warzone Mad Pack and the Warzone Adrenal. Now, the Mad Pack is one of the strongest heals in the game. It heals you for 35% of your maximum hit points. You can use them once per fight, meaning that they are even more powerful if your class has a combat reset, such as a lot of the stealth classes in the game, for example. Then the Adrenal is also one of the best defensive cooldowns in the game. 15% damage reduction might not seem like a lot, but 15 seconds is actually quite a long duration. Uh, it has a three minute cooldown, so you can use it multiple times per fight. Make sure you get them. They are really strong. How to get those items? You can get them from just playing PvP. Actually, after every war zone, you will receive a reward crate that contains them. But you can also buy them on the fleet before getting into a match for credits. And to do that, you just go to the PvP items vendor and buy them for a thousand credits a pop. Pro tip, by holding down shift before clicking, you can buy more than one easily. Next up, stims. So stims are what gives you this little buff that you can see here. And there's basically two stims that I would recommend using. The best stim will depend on the class that you play. The currently best stims available in the game are these two. So we have the advanced Cure Prax Proficient stim. <laughs> Try saying that 10 times fast. Uh, and the advanced Cure Prax Versatile stim. Versatile will give you a buff to mastery and power that lasts a long time, um, but you can have only one stim pack active at each time, so you cannot stack them. They have to choose, do you want mastery and power, which is great if your class doesn't need a lot of accuracy. Again, look at the class guides to know which one of these is best for your class. And you want to use the yellow stim if your class needs accuracy. Where to get those stims? Well, again, you can craft them if you have the biotech profession, which actually gives you uh, another bonus because you can craft the, the stims in a golden variant, which will mean that they are reusable. So if I'm going to be using the stim, now I only have eight in my inventory, but if I do have the biotech profession, I can craft a golden, let's say a legendary version of the stim that will not be consumed on use. So in the long run, that saves you a lot of credits, but again, you need to level your biotech in order to use that. The stats will be exactly the same. If you don't have crafting, of course, you can simply go to the GTN and with shift and left click, by the way, you can automatically pre-fill the search window. That's another nice tip. Search for them, sort by price, and then just buy them from here. So next would be grenades. In particular, I recommend that you buy a couple of V9 seismic grenades. Seismic grenades have been in the game for a long time and you can get them from crafting for the cyber tech profession or buy them on the GTN. Uh, why are they strong? Well, they basically give you a five second crowd control effect in an AOE area that's as big as this. So you throw them and everything in this area will be CC'd for five seconds or until they receive damage. Now using these on an enemy will give them a buff that protects them from being affected by cyber tech grenades for three minutes. Uh, that is so you cannot spam these grenades, which would be quite annoying. So you can only use the grenade once per three minutes, but still it's a very powerful item and you can buy them from the GTN or uh, crafting. Next up, class buffs. So class buffs are this little thing which you see here and you can see an overview of all available class buffs by going to your character window and then to legacy. So class buffs would be this little thing in the middle here. You can unlock them by finishing the second chapter of any class. You do not need it on Imperial and Republic side, so whatever you're playing, um, you need to play an Imperial agent story and finish the story until chapter two, so not even all the way. And this will unlock this, in this case, critical chance buff, which is a quite important one for doing damage for all of your characters. So 
You only need to do it once and then you have it forever, which is nice. Again, there's four of them. There's this buff, which is important, gives you 5% critical chance. Uh, the Bounty Hunter origin story will give you a 5% endurance buff. Sith Warrior gives you bonus damage and healing, which is great as well. And probably the most powerful buff will be this one, 5% mastery as well as internal and elemental damage reduction buffed by 10% for completing the Sith Inquisitor story chapter 2. So I would recommend that you play all those class stories at least until chapter 2 to unlock those class buffs. The class story honestly is one of the best things about this game and it has been a while since I played them. But if you have never played them, uh, you definitely should. They have some interesting twists and turns in there and um, are definitely well worth experiencing. For the purpose of PvP, playing the class story at least will get you familiar with the basic mechanics of each of the classes, which is another plus to playing them. Another trick that you can do is you can join a guild that has the Omni Magnification buff, which will give you all of these class buffs in one. And that's quite nice, because it saves you a lot of time. You can find Omni Magnification in your character abilities here. Go to the guild tab and drag it onto your bar. And again, this will give you all of the four buffs combined in one. So it's quite powerful. If you want to join a PvP guild on Duff Malgus, whisper me, you can join our new guild called Frogdog Farmers. As you can see, we are already working on the flagship and it's coming together quite nicely. We are also working on unlocking all the rooms here. So the more people join, the faster we can get all of those guild buffs. Next up would be companion buffs. So there's a total of five relevant companion buffs. You will get a bonus to your max health in case it's always 1% in each case. Um, you can get a bonus to your critical damage, to your healing received, to your critical chance, and to your accuracy, 1% each. You will get those buffs for, again, completing chapter two of your class story and then going to your ship or a cantina with the companion active and talking to them. This will either just give you a conversation or sometimes a side quest that you can do. And once you finish all of the side quests, then you will get these permanent buffs. Again, you only need to do it once to have this available on all of your characters across your legacy. So almost done. What else do you need to do? Uh, finally, you need to do data crons. Data crons are little hidden items that you can find throughout the world and that will give you a small but permanent buff to your main stats. So mastery, endurance, and so on. Again, this buff is also legacy wide, which is quite nice. So that means you need to collect the data crons only on one character and you will have them shared across your whole legacy of characters. Once you find the data cron, you will also get one of these codex entries. So you can see there's quite a lot of data crons. I think it's probably around 100 nowadays that you can collect. And there's a lot of guides already on YouTube, so I'm not going to repeat all of those. Just Google um, uh, Star Wars The Old Republic data crons and you will find a lot of dedicated YouTubers that have done very detailed walkthroughs and tutorials on how to get all of the data crons where they are hidden with maps and tutorials on how to reach them. Some of them are quite interesting jumping puzzles that can be fun to get or frustrating depending on you know if jump and run is your cup of tea. Overall, the buffs are impactful, but they're not going to make or break the gameplay because we are talking about you know three mastery a data cron. So you know even if there's 20 of them, it's not going to be a huge buff to your damage, but it's a, a little bit of min maxing that you can do once you've completed all of the earlier steps of the gearing process. Okay. Last one would be a bonus tip. This is, of course, not really required for getting into PvP, but it's still something that I recommend that you do, and that's buying a stronghold. To do that, you simply go to the fleet, go to the strongholds and crew skills section down here, and you click on one of these terminals in order to bring up the stronghold window, click on purchase, and then you can see what it costs to buy a stronghold. Once you've purchased a stronghold, you can go to your strongholds window, see your personal or your guild strongholds and travel to them. Now these strongholds have a lot of things you can do that have nothing to do with PvP, but as far as PvP is concerned, one thing that I would definitely recommend you do is you make sure you have a training dummy in your stronghold. So in the case of the Rishi stronghold, the training dummy would be over here. And if you see my videos or my guides, you'll know that I frequently abuse this training dummy in order to warm up, in order to practice rotations or simply just test something out. So the training dummy 
will kind of take similar damage compared to an enemy in PvP. And lets you practice your combo and just kind of learn which ability does how much damage and kind of get a feel for the class or even just warm up your hands before you get into a match. So always nice to have it. That's it for today. In case I forgot anything or there's something else you want to learn, just let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video, of course, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.